welcome, achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game podcast for the week of February 8th already. My God. Yeah. 2024, of course. I am one of your hosts, Elijah. Sitting with me today, very special guest. I didn't check with you before. Yeah. Grayson. Is that how we pronounce it? Graydon. Graydon. Yeah. Graydon. Yeah. yeah. Graydon nice Webb. Nice to meet you. Nice to Graydon Webb. That is me. Perfect. Uh, yeah, lovely to be here. Thank you very much for having me on. No, oh, of course. You um, you actually reached out, and you're someone I actually meant to contact weeks ago now uh, to work something out, and it just slipped by me. This The beginning of the year have been so hectic in terms of news mm-hmm. and what's going on and different things in the background I have, but thank you for coming on. Thank you for making the time. I'm very excited to discuss yeah. this week is... Not crazy week, but we have pretty crazy news, I guess, to discuss in terms of, of course, we all know about the Xbox thing. If you guys care about that, I do have a video already up with one Dan from Podcast PXN. You can go check that out if you want a full just talking about the Xbox thing. This is, of course, the regularly scheduled Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week. So we'll be going through the news. We'll be touching base because I am curious about what you think, Graydon, about Xbox potentially going multi-platform, the rumors, what your thoughts are on it. We'll be touching that a little bit later, but I'm excited. You all know what to do on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. You know what to do. So let's go into the show with Not So Rapid Fire. This is via VGC. Helldivers 2 is out and has mixed reviews currently on Steam. Some citing server and game issues. Others saying the season pass of the game contains actual weapons and not just cosmetics with a little pay-to-win thing there. I don't... Were you excited at all for Hell, uh, Hell Divers 2? I wasn't at first, and then closer to launch, I keep seeing things that are very intriguing. Uh, seeing this, it seemed like it was mainly a PC issue. I'm not sure uh, how it's going on on PlayStation. I imagine that is the most polished version, as that usually goes down. Consoles are usually the most polished thing to release. What did you think of Hell Divers 2 leading up to launch, and is this something you're going to try? Um, it's definitely one of those ones that I kind of forgot, <laughs> forgot was coming out or had come out. Um, I mean, they, they promoted it quite a bit in like state of plays and stuff, but always in terms of like, here's a commercial for it. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 A whole lot of like, let's play it. Let's see the gameplay, which is weird because it's such a different game from the first one. So Very. you'd think that you would really want to spend a bit of time with it. They did do some demo at one point, but, um, still not enough to really leave an impression on me that hey it's one of the games of this year um but yeah no i i (laughs) currently don't it's pc and ps5 only right uh yes i don't believe it is on ps4 let me check that though um, while you talk okay because i mean i i hate to be that guy i'm primarily xbox um, yeah same but (laughs) but i and this isn't like a system seller for me or a reason to upgrade my PC, but right. I definitely was interested because the first one, I think I played it a little bit, but the second one did look, like I said, completely different. And um, so I'll, I'll pick it up at some point. I mean, it's probably guaranteed to be like a PS plus thing, especially if it doesn't, oh, yeah. um, if it doesn't perform too well, like right off the bat, but Yeah someday i'll get to it yeah yeah i i'm pretty much the same way i might get to it if my february ends a little sooner than i'm mentioning um i'll get into what uh what you've been playing but uh, I'm, i have a busy february so i don't really have plans to divert unless this turns out to be some sort of very very good game it looks you know it looks good it does seem like playstation's kind of sending it out maybe they they they, they, they don't seem super confident just the way they're acting. They have BPS blogs and all these things. There was no, there was, uh, as far as I understand, there wasn't a lot of early previews. The, the demo did come out, I believe, right? Was there a demo for this game? I can't remember. I don't know. I don't I think about one. so. So, eh, it feels like it's just kind of being sent out. Maybe. I don't know. They have been throwing these very, like, commercial, commercial, commercial things. So, maybe we'll finally see if it, is, if it can hold up. Because, like you said, Health Divers 1 was so so different top down um bullet hell kind of thing and this kind of looks like it's still trying to do that but different in terms of it doesn't seem like there's as many things on the screen uh it doesn't seem like it's as crazy but still probably that fun oh my god i just blew up my friend type of gameplay Uh, i'll be looking forward to it though 
Uh, I'm, I, I, like you said, this feels like a PS Plus game in six months, probably. So mm. hard to hard to be like, do I need to get it now? Well, I was looking it up. Like, is it is it a, a first party completely game or was it like an it's indie that's just been promoted? I oh, no, 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 no. It's 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 first. It's first. Party. It's made by. Um, OK. Oh, my God. Blinking on their names. So I wanted to say it was like a housemark thing, but it's not. It, no, it is not housemark. That that would be that would be sick. <laughs> I'm actually blanking <laughs> on who is making Helldivers right now. Uh, Arrowhead. They are not um, owned. There's it's kind of like a second party thing. Uh, OK, of course, that just means it's a third party where they have a. Kind of holding with them, mm-hmm. but it's so it's not a first party in the classical sense it is a third party that they kind of nurture i wouldn't be shocked if they buy them at some point yeah yeah i mean they haven't really done much else let's say that I mean, held divers this is a nine-year wait for this and i remember that when the first held divers came out and it did pretty well and people wanted a sequel but it's just one of those problems where it's like has it been too long and then if you're going to change the gameplay up so much you're like is this a completely different game yeah is it still hell divers which it it, to to its credit, it still does look like Helldivers, but like Helldivers, all it was was get on an empty planet, kill bugs, and that's what I mean. Yeah. That's what it looks like. So, I, I guess <laughs> doing something right. This is a quick one. Konami has opened a new animation studio called Konami Animation. That's pretty much all. Uh, they don't know what they're working on. They said they're interested in non Konami projects as well as Konami projects, uh, but. That's it. it. Looks like Konami's expanding out into animation. They've come back into gaming somewhat in the past, and uh, don't have really much to add to this. Actually, Graydon, what do you think? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, Konami. I've completely stopped caring about them in recent years. Yeah. Um, not that. Not that I super was into it's like the similar thing I have to Capcom where it's like anytime it's mentioned, I'm like, oh, them, they're a big name. And then I look at their games and I'm like, I, I know that they're huge. Yeah. But personally, have they affected me, like impacted my gaming life? Not super. Um, But I mean, you look at this, it's another it's another avenue for them to go down because weren't they the ones that were making like pachinko machines or something? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're huge in in Japan with pachinko machines and it's like lots of they. That's why they pretty much left gaming and they are now kind of mm. slowly coming back with, oh, here's your Silent Hills, your Metal Gear remakes, and these things. Clearly, in my opinion, half-hearted. Uh, they're coming back in the sense that they're back making games, kind of, but not necessarily back in the way you would want a Konami. They, they seem to be mm-hmm. being very, frankly, cheap with who they're getting. They seem to be um, uh, not really behind many of these projects in the way you'd want them to. So you could say they're back, but to me, they're kind of half in the door. Like, oh, you know, we'll throw some money to remake things, but it doesn't seem like there's like something in the works that are... We'll have to see, of course, with the Metal Gear remake. I mean, even the re-releases they did wasn't even taken well with how they were handled yeah yeah no it feels like in the in the gaming space they don't have their heart in it as much these days no so that could be a good thing for the animation side if they're like hey let's put like a lot of energy into that and you could do do things but looking at it on the surface it's hard to figure out what they're gonna (laughs) what they're planning here this is VGC. The eight games that will be featured at EV 2024 was announced. There is followed Street Fighter 6, Tekken 8, Mortal Kombat 1, Guilty Gear Strive, King of Fighters 15, Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising, Under Night, Inbirth 2, Sis Celis. I don't know what I just said. Street Fighter 3, Third Strike, and this is their throwback game for the year. Cool. Don't have much to, to to add other than to give that information out. I love Evo. I love watching Evo. I always tune in, uh, but I'm not a big fighting guy. I find I just find it entertaining. So I don't know if you have anything to add to this. Um, not a huge fighting guy either. But I've honestly never I've never tuned into Evo. I mm. I I should I should check it out. <laughs> Is it just like streamed on like YouTube and stuff? But yeah, yeah, you, the common places you, you know, Twitch, probably YouTube now. Um, usually the vi- the the videos would be put on YouTube, and that's mm-hmm. how I would consume them. I wouldn't be watching live. 
Uh, assumably, they would be streaming both places now because YouTube is such a bigger place now. I don't know if they yeah. have an exclusive contract with Twitch or not. And of course, this is all owned by PlayStation now as well. So maybe there'll be some sort of promotion in there as well. We don't know. Doesn't seem like them owning PlayStation owning this has affected the actual event much, which is good. Uh, yeah, but that's all. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. I'm excited for for the people that consume Evo content. <laughs> From software, acclaimed developer of Elden Ring and the Dark Souls series has acquired, well, Acquire, the studio behind Octopath Traveler Games. Announced today as of recording, Ketokawa has given some details on a why, and that's of course the owner of all this. Quote, to strengthen the ability to create IP in games as part of our game business strategy, we have made Acquire Corp into a wholly owned subsidiary by acquiring the company, which has produced million seller hit titles. We expect to generate synergies with our existing game-related subsidiaries, strengthening our planning and development compatibilities group-wide, and enhance our lineup of console games, end quote. Seems pretty on paper what this is about. They're just buying them to uh, make them do what they're doing. Seems like they want to diversify and not probably really rely on the FromSoft titles that you expect them to make. Maybe they want to diversify a bit into the gaming space to see if they can put their fishing lines into other pools, what they can grab. Uh, Acquire's pretty wise get now. I You would imagine you might get them for cheap now and maybe you get their next game. You uh, can also guess that they've probably seen whatever they're working on and maybe that's shown them quite promise and they jumped on it before they explode. Who knows? Like Octopath Traveler games are great. They don't sell particularly amazingly, but they do sell well for what they are. So, I don't know. What did you think of this moot news? This came out actually today. It's it kind of feels like a like a left field type of thing in terms of what they do. Like mm. an Octopath Traveler is a very different game, definitely <laughs> than anything that From Software does. Oh yeah, I mean, you've got you've got so many Souls likes across the entire gaming space big games and little games and they they're like let's pick up a, a jrpg <laughs> developer like that's it's interesting but it is a big name i mean i know what you mean by it doesn't really i i, I forget if you just said it didn't they don't sell tremendously or yeah yeah huge. they sell well the the but, you know, they're not they're, it's a little shocking in terms of maybe they got them because right now they, they're like, well, you could probably get them cheap because Octopath Traveler 2 sold. Well, probably not as well as you'd imagine, um, mm -hmm. because those games are pretty niche in terms. Um, while you talk, right. I'll get the actual sales figures for you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it is a niche thing. Um, but then, like, in terms of that niche, I remember hearing that name thrown around a lot when that first when the first one came out at least oh yeah um so like it's it's big enough that it's a cool get for them um and yeah i mean if they can if they can add that from software money into it <laughs> then they could do some cool stuff they also have a mobile game um that i'm just now remembering uh Ooh. i don't remember what it's called i think it's like octopath traveler world of the way is some something like that uh it looks like let's see yeah so they sold a million over a million copies in three and a half months which you know good but Sorry. not great like, <laughs> yeah. yeah a million copies you, you for a game like that that probably cost you imagine a good bit what probably 50 80 million mm. who knows uh, maybe it's much later but that's a dense game i've i mean i played good portion in it there's a lot of assets in that game you know they, it's not like they're reusing it unless they're reusing it wisely but uh maybe they got on that and of course the mobile game maybe that's making them a lot of money too and they're jumping on that we don't really know yeah, yeah. i mean companies will jump on mobile games or there wasn't there just a story about like platinum they were gonna make a near mobile game and then they canceled it like that was like something I read. Yeah, yeah, day. yeah. I, I, <laughs> so, I remember like, saying that. Mm -hmm. So like, it's you never really know when you bank on a mobile game, but sometimes they are profitable and helpful for studios. Yeah, you're just rolling the dice pretty much with mobile gaming yeah. at this point. Like, w mm -hmm. will it explode in the like three to four days it has to to explode? Right. Now this is of course where we talk about what have you been playing. Of course, this 
is what we've been playing over the week. I will start it off because I'm excited to discuss what I've been doing. Um, so, of course, this is the month of uh, Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth comes out at the end of the month. And I'm taking the time because it's not there's not too much out that really jump on me. So I was like, you know what? Let me take this time and really dive deep into Final Fantasy VII as I think its history demands it almost at this point. And it really was a blind spot for me. So I've gone back to the original Final Fantasy VII. I won't, if I had to guess, I'm halfway through the game. Uh, pretty deep into the game. I, I'm enjoying it. Uh, I think the game actually has a pretty slow start, but once it starts going, I actually got really good. Um, I always bring up, uh, although the maps and the art and all this looks amazing, sometimes the models just look so silly in comparison to what they're doing. Of course, that's the times, and, and you know the game is older, and it's never really gotten any sort of up in anything. It's just been re-released over and over again. But I'm enjoying my time with it. I... It's a Final Fantasy game in the classical sense that I haven't played in quite a while. I played Final Fantasy 1, of course, last year and haven't gotten to the other ones in the collection yet, but I'm enjoying it. I'm curious to see, and I'm I'm happy because once I play this, I'll be moving into Final Fantasy 7 Remake to then finish that again on hard, and then I'll be going to the DLC, and then we'll be getting Rebirth at the end of the month, so... I'm getting a lot of Final Fantasy VII, and I'm and I'm excited to go back into it knowing what I know now. And I would say where I am in the game, I've seen everything I know. Like a, like a big thing I knew happened a little while ago. Of course, the the famous, most famous thing probably in mm-hmm. gaming history happened a little while ago, and then other things happened. And so everything feels new now, which is nice because you know I kind of saw everything come in. And now I don't know what happens, and I really don't know what I'm going to be doing for the rest of this game, which is exciting. Uh, Graydon, what have you been playing? Um, so I've kind of been doing two things. Um, I got uh, Prince of Persia, Lost Crown. Oh, fa- fantastic game. talked about that at all. <laughs> yeah, I have discussed. I played that actually for like the week it came out or something or a week and a half. And I devoured that game. I loved it very much. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, um, so I rented it and gave it a couple of hours. And then I was like, this is just one of those games I'm going to want to buy at some point and yeah. really just enjoy. Yeah. Um, cause like I hadn't played the demo. It was one of those ones. I'm going to skip the demo. I just know I'm going to like it. I'm a big, yeah. uh, Metroidvania fan. And, I was surprised with how like it's it's feels so polished and just enticing. Um, there's a lot of cool variation in. I'm trying to think, but I'm thinking back on it because it wasn't like the super most recent one. But I just I remembered that I I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, so yeah, highly recommend it. But my current game that I'm playing is Lost in Random. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember this. Uh, what made you jump onto Lost and Random? This is was this a, t- a 2019 game or something? I, I can't remember. So. It was um, it was an EA original. And I've played most of those because I'm a big uh, Joseph Fares fan. So, like, oh, I've yeah, yeah. The, yeah. It takes to the way out. Um, but yeah, this one was always in the backlog. And I knew it was on Game Pass. And I've just been every year I try to make a list of games to get to when there's not just a whole lot going on. And so I finally decided to dive into this one and I'm really captivated by it. Like the the art style is probably what takes people right off the bat because it's very like Burton-esque, um, like claymation and just twisted world but then it's got this really interesting kind of deck building mechanic to it and i'm very hit or miss with deck builders i've i've done a lot of shitting on them in the past (laughs) (laughs) but but the way that this utilizes it where you just kind of you go into every combat um scenario unarmed and then you just kind of have to gather up enough energy to eventually take your little dice buddy and throw him. And then he brings up cards. And based on the amount of energy you've collected, 
you get to use the cards, which could give you either a sword, a bow and arrow, a bomb, a health elixir, and you just kind of play around with every combat scenario based on on the cards you have and what you've gathered. And so it's like it's slow moving and tactical, but it's also just a really fun environment to do that in. So it's just very, like I said, captivating. I just I keep wanting to go back and play more of it. And supposedly it's not super long, which I enjoy because then I can get on to the next one <laughs> and, and try to see how many things I can knock off my list this year. But uh, I am enjoying my time with it, definitely. Yes. Um. So I was off. It was 2021. This game launched. Oh, jeez. It looks awesome. Uh, exactly what you said. It reminds me of the um. I've seen. Uh, I I love the movie. Uh, I think it's Caroline. Uh, oh, Coraline. Yeah, yeah. Coraline. Thank you. Um, lo- I love that movie, and this ev- evokes pretty much everything about that. Almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, no puppets, but looks <laughs> looks amazing. I, I this is one game where I saw and I was like, oh, I don't know, maybe I'll try this one day, and it's completely left my radar. So, uh, you're so glowing about it. Maybe I'll add it to something and play it at some point. Because it, it does yeah. look and it's, you know, reviewed very well in here and seems like it it, it has um a little following as well. Yeah, it's and it's on EA Play, which is part of Game Pass, and it probably will be there for forever. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever that ends. So, yeah. Yeah. So I highly suggest it. Perfect. Let's go yeah. to Rumor Roundup. All right. This is actually mislabeled, but I'm going to put this here anyways. The FTC made a complaint against Microsoft about the 900 layoffs. Uh, this wasn't too big of a deal. One, because this is this was sort of, I believe, a formality type of thing, and they didn't really see anything from it, but there was a response to it. Uh, Microsoft lawyers responded with, quote, Activision was already planning on eliminating a significant number of jobs while still operating as an independent company, end quote. Pretty much saying, uh, yeah, they clearly held layoffs for us to do it. Uh, uh, probably for a lot of their people to get uh, their paydays, mm. uh, which is wise as well. You want to uh, leave it for someone else to do it if you're in that situation, and they were, and everyone got huge paydays. So, congrats to those who got paid off, I guess, and sorry to those who got laid off and got nothing out of it because plenty of them exist as well. Did you see any of this with the, of course, um, we, we've had having so many layoffs in the industry. Um, yeah. Any comments on that? Or, of course, these layoffs and the situation that we found it ourselves in with this kind of seems like every few few days, few weeks now, we're getting layoffs here, layoffs there in what seemingly is a giant, overspent, overgrown uh, situation that many people have found themselves in. Uh, of course, with all the money coming from COVID and, and all the extra money that they got they invested in new hires, which is clearly was unwise with the idea of hindsight. Yeah. I mean, that was the, my main thing was just that it does feel like every day you get some kind of news about either a big layoff or a little one. I forget who the most recent one was, but it was something like, why, why them? Like what? Mm. Just, just random studios will be, will be getting rid of people. And I mean, you have over hiring everywhere, like you said, probably due to due to COVID thinking, oh, my God, we've got to get people. And um, it's just really, really upsetting that this is going on. Not even not even game developers, but game journalists and just like everything. Every aspect of the industry is getting hit. You have know, games getting canceled left and right. And it's crazy. It's just it's it's really unfortunate for everybody involved. What would you think is some of the main factors? Do you think it really is COVID that is affecting these things? I theorize this as well. And a lot of economists are saying it's not even downsizing. It's what a lot of economists are causing is right sizing because many of them come completely over leveraged and Mm. probably put their bets on the wrong horses in a lot of ways. I imagine at least most of them are, but it seems hard to believe that every studio is layoffs. It almost feels like there might be some sort of gaming bubble that might pop soon. I I don't know what that means, but 
maybe something like that is close to happening. I'm not sure, but it just seems strange that ever all of these studios over leverage in some way. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe they did. It is weird because it does feel like there's more jobs like available in the, or at least more positions in general this day and age than like there used to be. And I mean, games are bigger now. Studios are a lot bigger. They're doing more, more games at a time. So that makes sense. But I, it does feel like the, the right sizing kind of makes sense if they like bloated the studios with tons of people and then they, they got to get rid of them. But you just, you never want to see that. You want, you hope that studios adapt and, you know, just you have more people, you can have more projects, which in turn becomes more money. Like mm. try to turn it into a way to help the workers as well as your your profits and your business, because we know that's all they're concerned about <laughs> at the at the top. So, I mean, I think that there's ways to deal with this and to figure it out, but it just stinks when it's like, well, we've got to do a blanket layoff to to really start thinking because then you're like are they really gonna even keep thinking or are they just gonna think well now we can now we can get back to business money money as usual so i don't know it's just a shame when it's it's the news every single day or every couple of days is like this big titan of the industry studio being like we're gonna cut half our staff Mm. crazy yeah we might be discussing more of that later too but yeah, it's just it's interesting to think about. It does seem like we stopped maybe for a little bit. Of course, fiscal years are closing in on us ending. So maybe we'll see a couple more spikes here and there. Who knows? But maybe it's maybe it's done for now. Maybe we're nowhere close to being done. Uh, there was someone um, I'm blanking on who now. I apologize. But someone was mentioning that uh, if you think these are bad, like just wait. We're not talking layoffs. We're talking closures by the end of the year. Um, I, feel, I can't remember who it was. It might have been uh, some Anos. I don't want to. I don't want to misquote them, but uh, it was pretty much that. Where we might, it might be worse by the time we end the year with actual closures of studios. We already know PlayStation is looking at somebody, uh, of course, with the Insomniac leaks. So there's already one there. So yeah, we might see maybe maybe you know who knows Ubisoft, maybe Xbox. Who knows? But you know if that is forecasted, it's not done yet, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean last year. Like we lost like the time splitters devs right at the end of the year. Yep. And then like mid year to PlayStation shut down. Was it Japan studio? Yeah, like that was Guardian. Yeah, that was a while ago. But yeah, yeah, they they yeah. closed them down and then made Team Asobi out of them. Oh, was that? Oh, really? I thought mm-hmm. that there was news about that last year. I'm sorry. OK, then that it might have been. Like, I mean, I'm not going to pretend like I remember. Dates, <laughs> but I know I know I know they closed them down. A little bit. Yeah, it's just. Uh, that that wouldn't surprise me if studios got shut down. I'd hate to see it, but you see a lot of people, especially the big studios, banking on like this game's got to make or break us, and and then you never know what'll happen. Next up, a new PlayStation handheld may be in the works. As Sony, as tech YouTuber and known leaker Moore's Law is dead. As information that there is a handheld in early development that will play PS4 and PS5 games that will launch alongside the PS6. Of course, PlayStation 6, if that is what it's called. The primary reason, according to our sources, is to strengthen their position in the home market of the of their Japanese marketplace. This is true. Uh, we will see a return to something that is pretty funny. Uh, I've detailed later earlier in the week. If this is true, that's pretty funny. They went into the handheld market had giant success with the PSP did the Vita fell on their face in many ways left seeded it to both Nintendo and then for later steam to pretty much do what they were doing make a thing that can play your games on the fly instead of making a dedicated marketplace hey why don't we make it to where they could just play their games on this thing and that's what they did and it looks like Sony was like oh wait that's a good idea. Maybe we should do that again if this ends up coming true. Of course, they could be working on this and get canceled, et cetera, et cetera. So a million caveats, but this could be happening. What do you think? Did you see this? And uh, is this something that you would see a Sony do in assumably 2020, what, eight? Yeah, the, 
I mean, any kind of rumor about like a new Vita or PSP, just I, I try not to pay super attention to it because I will get hyped about it and then it will fall apart. Um, you also got to mention the that the portal came out. Yeah, people thought, oh, this might be a thing. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> they're testing it, the waters. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe they are. Because it definitely didn't feel like it was. I mean, even trying to be like a Steam Deck killer. But no, no, people no. were then like, oh, this is definitely not even comparable. <laughs> and and which sucked because you wanted to see it do good. But I mean, I don't know. I you obviously have your your people that love the Vita. I'm one of them um, and think it deserved so much better. But it just suffered. It had like a an Xbox one level launch n- that didn't work out for it and then it just tainted everything else and um yeah i would love to see something but really it's it's hard because now you have a thing like the steam deck which is near perfect and the switch is always going to be on top like even this year if we get one that doesn't really feel like a full step improvement people will still buy that half step just because they love the switch so much So, I mean, you have those two things, not to mention that the Switch basically killed off the their handheld market. And they were like, everyone was fine with that because the Switch did what it needed to. So what I'm getting at is if we start going toward like with your your Xbox stuff, if we start going toward um, exclusivity kind of going to the side, then a Steam Deck could do this. I mean, you already have PlayStation games a lot on Steam, and I think our deck verified and just work yeah. fine. You can yeah, it, it's a War Horizon. It's almost a shame when you think about it that way. It if this does come out, which assumably this, or th- according to the leak, it, it wouldn't even be you know it wouldn't be there to play PS6 game. It'd be there to play PS4, PS5 games, which I think is strange but maybe they're trying to make a ps5 handheld for that gen maybe i don't i don't know it depends mm-hmm. on how it works too it could it could run things natively like the steam deck but not have a dedicated marketplace that's probably the wisest if they do go this route at this point um going back to the ps portal really quick uh it does seem like that thing is popular with who has it but he, I, I don't see it kind of exploding i'm curious if playstation sees success in it you imagine they assumed many people wouldn't buy it because it's this like niche in a niche. Like you have to like want to, you have to like like your PlayStation enough to play it elsewhere and then have a good enough internet to, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. So like, it's already like sketchy in terms of who do you even market to? Um, yeah, that's one thing too. I haven't really seen it marketed that much. Like I, I, you know, you see the blog posts and things when it came out, but you know, who I'd be curious to see how well it sold and if it is a success to them. Cause you imagine they didn't think it's so that much, but Mm. I don't know. They have a captive audience there with how big PS five is going. So maybe people just bought it to buy it. I don't know. Uh, and it was only, you know, it's only 200 bucks too. So it's, it's one of those like, eh, it's easy to kind of justify to like the random person. And, you know, you might get a few people thinking it, it is, it is like a dedicated thing. And then they buy it and they're like, Oh, it doesn't do what I want, but they still use it a little bit. Mm -hmm. It is an interesting thing though. When you think you bring up that it's PS4 and PS5, if this is a real thing, you look at how people with their handhelds wanted to play like ps1 ps3 games even like it feels like every kind of new playstation installment they've learned a bit too late that people want to play old games so it makes me think like well if they make this maybe they're making it as like a retro machine type of thing and they're like well we're you just want to be able to play your ps4 games right on the go I don't know. It's very Here weird. Here you go. I, or you got PS Plus, like stream, whatever classic thing is going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I personally don't. It's hard to think of like a PS4 game that I would want to play handheld. Just because like they were bigger, more exciting <laughs> things hmm. that I don't know if I would really want to play, like even on a Switch yeah. if I could. But to each their own with that. Yeah, one of those things where we'll have to see. Um, and I will quickly add 
Uh, there were the Xbox rumors coming out. Um, I, I did not. I'm not going to report on them one because it doesn't. It there are m- multiple rumors from seemingly as credible sources as the others. One saying that there was no plans. Now there are. One saying that there is a next gen console and now also a handheld. People saying that there wasn't one and they're going to be late. One is they're early and and they're going to be before the place. Like I, I didn't know what to <laughs> report on. So take this as the I'm reporting on it. I know it existed. You now know it happened. I don't have much to add because I don't know who to believe. It all seemed kind of random. Uh, if the it, it, I did see people think the. Uh, next generation console having the, the an Xbox handheld with it seemingly being more uh, uh have more validity to it so to quickly add uh that would be a similar strategy to what this is happening right here it makes sense for what xbox is doing uh we still don't know their multi-platform plans we'll talk about that in a little bit but it's, it's cool it, it, if they have game pass they have cloud they they keep working on that yeah an xbox handheld makes sense I, you would imagine they do the same thing there is no dedicated marketplace it's Hey, buy this thing, play your Xbox games. If you want to, you can play it on the cloud too, which seemingly is getting more and more popular with the introduction of good games on Game Pass. Who would have who would have thought uh, more people would play this thing if we actually got games on this thing? Uh, and then another little out of left field thing in terms of that, Apple just like allowed people to be able to, they, they allowed the ability for Xbox to say, hey, here's like a Game Pass yep. app yep, <laughs> or an xCloud app. Mm-hmm. And then, then you've got a whole different device or set of devices where you can play these big games on. It's like, do we really need to split the market this much when yeah. we could just kind of work together and be, I don't know, get it to people easier? Yeah. So again, don't know who to believe. There you go. That's what I saw. Not sure. Not sure. Not sure what to believe out there because it's like three things all contradicting each other pretty much. Yeah. This was one that was shot down. There were rumors that the D&D license might be sold off from Hasbro to a potential buyer, something like a Tencent. Uh, This was commented on by a uh, Wizards of the Coast spokesperson and immediately struck it down. I imagine they were on damage codes. It was like, uh, uh, that's not happening, and you have to shut it down now because that that might affect our stock prices. So uh, you see they commented on it relatively quickly, too. I believe it was the same day. Uh, Nothing to add. It would be silly if they sold off the frankly most valuable thing they have right now maybe with uh you know of course all the D things the, the the books the figures and then you got the games now and then they sold the movie recently so i would imagine that'd be pretty silly unless they were like selling it off to not worry about it anymore but it'd be a wild move to sell off your most valuable ip pretty much yeah i mean even with the movie like now you're branching into like successfully branching into even more outlets yeah it would it would be wild because yeah what else do they have transformers yeah yeah (laughs) and i i always get confused what hasbro even is so i would have to do more (laughs) research to be like what else do they even own i know they have like toy rights to a bunch of things but like do they own transformers i don't know yeah i don't know (laughs) next up according to very reliable source nate the hate someone who is cited on very much on the show uh, there's going to be a S- Switch 2 is ready for a March reveal. Uh, seemingly, according to sources, it seems like that might be where it hits. And then there is going to be a Direct this month, but it will be a partner Direct, meaning it will be maybe a Nindy, maybe a uh, straight up, hey, this is, here is a Direct. It is strictly third party. Like, you know, something as direct as that. Uh, usually Nintendo, when they do their Directs, uh, they just kind of announce them and they're like, and it's tomorrow or in two days. So <laughs> at some point, I imagine we'll hear this. Nate the Hate is a very reliable source. Uh, so I imagine all this is true. Hmm. That would be cool. I really do hope for for me and for just <laughs> Switch fans in general that it's something substantial to be like a new console. But like... That I feel like the the things that I want, like a a 4K system, <laughs> is <just laughs> a pipe dream, you know. Yeah, no, definitely is. I imagine you, you know, the uh, who was it? Oh my god, I'm already blanking on it. But someone reported that there's an eight inch screen 
for it. Mm. And that's all they know. So cool. Uh, it's LCD, <laughs> so it's not OLED. So that already tells you it's like, all right, well, in two years, they'll have an OLED version of this thing. Uh, mm. I'd be shocked if it's 4K. You imagine what the upgrade is. It's, it's eight inches. You get you get, you know, a slightly bigger screen maybe a, not even maybe a better battery life depending on what you're playing maybe if you're playing switch games it's like oh averages 12 hours or 20 12 to 20 depending on the game and then switch to yeah. maybe it's eight i don't know with the switch light they improved a lot on on battery life i believe and supposedly stick drift but if they can if they can lock in both of those issues and make them better then that's that's even good enough for me <laughs> <clears throat> I'm wondering if this so you assume this is the next system. Is this going to be like, like what's like? Usually, Nintendo has a gimmick, right? So, what's the gimmick for this one? Of course, Switch being like you could switch it between TV and handheld. Mm. We, of course, famously mo motion shows revolutionized gaming in that way. Uh, well, I wonder what it's going to be for this one. Will it even have one? Maybe it'll be kind of like a Nintendo to Super Nintendo situation where it is like it just it's better. Like, that's all it is. I don't know. That's kind of what I'm most circular. excited for, honestly. <laughs> what is it? Was that? It's gonna be a circular system. It's it'll be a, be a it'll be a fat circle. Yeah, you have to play it like <laughs> this. It has no buttons. <laughs> it's all direction based. It's like Simon says. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It talks to you. Oh my god. Uh, so via a bunch of things that aren't meant to be read. It's just a throwaway account to report on this, assumably. Uh, there's there's a rumor going around. Persona 2 and Persona 4 remasters are in the works at Atlas, according to two insiders. The uh, Persona 2 is a remaster, not a remake. Important to note, a remaster, not a remake. Uh, Persona 2 Redemption will include both parts as well as new translation and quality of life changes, similar to what they're doing with the recent Persona 3 Reload. It's going to be coming to all platforms, including the Switch 2 and next-gen Xbox, whatever that means. Potential P Persona 4 remake is years away, hasn't even entered production. Interesting that this person would know that then. Uh, <laughs> Persona 2 Remaster is a small undertaking releasing either before Persona 6 or the year after. So P2, uh, assume it is soon because looks like it is just going to be uh, make it prettier and sell it to you. Part of the Sona 4, not even in pre-pro yet. If it is a full-on remake of the game, yeah, that, that would take much longer. Maybe they're going to do a even bigger than a th reload with this, potentially. Who knows? But I'm a Persona Mega fan, so I'll eat all this up. Won't be for a while, but we now know we're getting probably uh, Persona 2 and Persona four again which i love persona 4 my favorite is still persona 5 royal but uh, and i'll be playing persona 3 probably next month when i'm done with all my final fantasy nonsense uh so expect that soon now isn't persona 4 or at least persona 4 golden the vita one yeah like the the most like it's like everyone's favorite yeah like, so i think it's it, it, the I, big that, one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think that's when the i i was actually funny you bring this up i was talking with close friend um Alex from the show. And I, if I had to like describe them, Persona 4 Golden was when the West really adopted to it. And then Persona 5 is when it kind of exploded. And then Royale, it exploded like even more. Mm -hmm. It feels like it was like that. So since I, since I, I imagine they have everyone's attention, they're like, well, let's rack up money. Here's Persona 4 Golden on consoles. Here's Persona 3 Reload. Here's P3 Portable. So, you know, the same version of the game, just like uh, ported from their the PSP version. Now here's a remake of that. Now here's P2. Now, you know, it, and it just keeps it, it just keeps yeah. spiraling. Right. You imagine Atlas is jumping on the chance to resell these games because, I mean, they didn't get popular to the fourth one here. So now they can Ooh. be like, well, let's remake these things and resell to everybody i'm i'm surprised every time they come out i mean it's it, it's huge now yeah like, it's already uh i don't know if you saw this p uh, uh the persona 3 reload already hit, uh passed a million which makes it the fastest two million sold atlas game ever i believe wow it was either atlas wow. or persona game so someday i will get on persona 5 
<laughs> Good luck. The, it literally <laughs> is like yeah, devote a hundred hours to a single game to beat it, not even like to do everything. Like it's just to beat the oh game. So good luck with that. I love them. Uh, I devour. Okay. I've I devoured some for Golden when it was on Vita. Replayed it when it came to Xbox. I mean, the whole nine yards. Reported by Reuters, Tencent is working on an adaptation of 2022's Elden Ring, developed by From Software, into a mobile game. Now, Tencent is not adapting it, but attempting to make a free-to-play microtransaction mobile game. You would come to expect from them. Now, most people are probably saying that it struggles to make any sense whatsoever, as Elden Ring is a premium experience with nothing like that in the game whatsoever. So it is unclear what they're even attempting to do with this game. It, it was, it, and it's been, a, it has been agreed upon since the game launched, or probably even before the game launched, that they were working on this, and it's taking time because it, you imagine they're like, "How do we make this in a free-to-play game? It's not structured that way at all." Uh, looks. Uh, Tencent is a pretty horrible company and seems like they're fucking it up again, which is hilarious. Oh, yeah. uh, they're trying a Genshin Impact like thing, but in the West. Uh, I wonder if this is, you know, it'd be funny if it was codenamed West version of a Genshin Impact or something like that. You know, like it is like that attempt. So I don't know. Thinking of what they would do to Elden Ring to make a mobile game, it makes me sick to my stomach. So, like, in terms of a slot machine you hit and you're like, oh my God, you got Millennia and it's popping at you and it's garbage. And I don't know. I don't have anything but negative to say. Do you have anything to say about this? Weirdly, I feel like you could you could do a lot if you change it a lot. Like, oh, yeah. You, yeah. Gonna... It's, it's like, is it even Elden Ring at that point? Yeah. <laughs> like, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to have regular like we took Elden Ring we put it on a phone and now there's yeah a battle pass or something like yeah, it's just yeah, not going to yeah. make sense but if you did like this is like chibi Elden Ring this is mm. like some kind of uh match 3 or something <laughs> oh know, my like, god people, people would eat it up and yeah they would there would be they people would. that buy that but it's got to be different in that case yeah N- nothing else to add that is a rumor out of let's start the show for the week now, I wanted to touch with you about this, Graydon. Mm-hmm. Um, we had the Xbox multi-platform rumors spiraling out of control. I, of course, have an entire video discussing my thoughts on that. If you'd like to know, you can go to that. I wanted to ask you, you know, let's touch on it here. What did you think? How did you find out? Have your thoughts changed over the kind of, what, three days or ish? Three, four days we've had on it? Expound, Yeah. Please. Yeah, it's like I've tried not to dive too hard into it because, again, it's so much speculation. Like you said earlier, it's like so many rumors will just come out and then uh, like everyone's just hating on so much. (laughs) It's like so many people. Oh, I'm selling my Xbox. So I'm never buying anything again. Complete mental degradation (laughs) on, on on Twitter and all these things. It's crazy. Like, even if that part is real or not, there's there's genuine anger toward the brand yeah. for doing. I mean, nothing yet, <laughs> but, but also like just like. I don't see why it's that big of a deal. Like ah, we okay. have the best the best way I've seen it described is like you wanted no exclusivity and now you've gotten mad but then when there was a console war you got mad Mm. (laughs) like i just think i think just the internet is in shambles about this until Mm. we until we know what's going on and yeah it it does seem like um if i may interrupt i apologize uh yeah it does seem like people are already backtracking on like what they were saying too uh you Mm. see these like xbox I mean, I, I guess we just call them fanboys or whatever you want to call these people that are that like probably falsely reported or or at least pretended to know things. And now they're like, oh, no, it's all chill now. It's good. Like I I heard news and people will be think this will be silly. And, and like and the next week I'm like, OK, I don't know what yeah. what's going on with you. But uh, I if I can expound a little bit, I will say um to push back a bit on why would it matter? I don't blame people for being upset rationally of course and we're not talking about ex ed, ed cases here but uh rationally if 
Xbox does come out and say, hey, all of our games are coming third party. Yeah, I, I would be like, well, uh, what about the people who like either just bought it thinking this is the Xbox machine? I'll be able to play Halo, things like that. Why? What if you would to go third party in a major way in 10 years? Do you still are you still able to justify making a console? And then what happens to X, Y, Z? And I understand that is problems for tomorrow. But I don't bring up problems tomorrow when it's happening. I bring them before that happens, right? So I imagine that's a lot of the again rational people's problems. And when if you know all the people that are losing their minds, of course they're losing their minds for hilarious reasons. And it is a little funny to to look at it and pick on them a bit because they're kind of psychos. I've met, I've I've dived into that group a few times just to poke their brains and see like what they understand and a lot of them have no fucking idea what they're talking about clearly and don't probably really understand video games so i don't really put any weight to them other than it's a little funny to to watch them freak the fuck out about stuff um mm -hmm. i don't know what you think of what i had to say there uh great no you put that you, you put it into good perspective of like i mean i bought the system and i mean as we're getting more and more into this world where improvements are hard to notice as much and it's mm. really based on like what games are you going to bring like it sucks to say but a lot of it is about exclusivity these days and what you buy your system for because the systems are exactly the same pretty much the like yeah give or take uh, the xbox i think had like some better 4k and the PlayStation has a better controller, arguably. <laughs> but like, other than that, it's about the games. And pretty much. So, so yeah. If you if you do away with what makes your systems a system seller, then it it does become like, why am I? Why did I do this? Why did I buy this six hundred dollar machine? Yeah. When I could have bought the other one. So um, I don't know. I I really. I'm really just kind of in the in the boat of we need to wait and see what we they do. say. Yeah. Um but we were we were doing a podcast the other day and uh one of my fellow writers Josh was like I, I hate that behind the scenes stuff always feels so secretive. Mm. And I think that, that was like a really good point like it it's always these things like these these inner workings that we just want them to be transparent about so we can know who we're buying from and what's going on and i mean especially you have a company like xbox where everybody always thinks oh they're the cool guys they're the ones that want to want to talk to everybody and and be up front and then this is just like shrouded in mystery it's yeah it, it's a very weird week i think a lot of people that um that you bring up so many good points so many things i want to jump off one i think a lot of people started viewing them friendly which i don't know why the why you would do that to anyone making that much money i mean phil is cool i like i like phil like he he seems like a nice man he seems like he knows a little bit of what he's doing at least uh, yeah. i i like him as a person he seems cool he seems nice uh but i i could give two shits about like him in his job position i could care less about what xbox thinks and wants in these things you know I, I i have my own goals that i want seen but aside from that i don't really care about this brand as like a, in terms of like survivability or how well they do or these things as long as they're there for what i want them to yeah, I've, yeah i'm completely detached from everything else and it seems like maybe in terms of pr wise they they might have got this kind of weird parasocial thing going on where people legitimately think they're like being betrayed like there's all these names in the Xbox fanboy space or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you have your Colt Eastwoods, your Clobrills, whatever the fuck these people's names are, and they lost their they lost the shit, like you know, they, and they like because they probably really thought like they're like friends with these people or something or I don't know, but I imagine at the end of this, a big takeaway from them would be like we got to change how we do PR because these guys kind of lost it and like made it probably 10 times worse than than what most likely is the announcement which is like a couple random games are going to be multi-platform we need to recoup costs this is to maintain game pass etc etc which if it turns out to be like these 
pretty straightforward logistical things. Yeah, it, it probably was overblown. Is that something you think might happen? I, I think by the end of this, it I think worries would be overblown, but I would probably argue it's better to be overly upset than under because at least you show that there's a clear line that there is that that cannot be crossed. What do you think? Yeah, and that that comes with being like rationally upset, like you said. Yeah. Because the worst is when it's like the people who are returning their Xboxes <laughs> are like influencers or like big names. And, Pretty wild. And, yeah, and and you got a following, and you're being a baby. Yeah. <laughs> but like, if you can l- re- recognize that, like you said, there are people higher up than Phil, and that like it's not. That there are people at the top who wouldn't give a shit about what you want from Xbox. They're yeah. just gonna do what they want. So you can't you can't think of any any business, any corporation as your friend and think that they owe you anything. And it's just gonna like like that's where you lead to people getting so disappointed about stuff like this. And you just gotta take everything with a grain of salt until we know what's going on. Mm, yeah, I, I'm, and we'll know by, uh, we'll know soon, whatever's going on. Uh, I, I'll be curious if they're very strict with like, to maintain status quo or something, we have to release some first party games to make money. Like, I think it would just be wiser to be like, hey, Xbox Game Studios, exclusive? just for ease of understandability. And then these are our Xbox play anywhere titles. And now we are using that literally with Bethesda and Activision Blizzard. Like, I think that would be the easiest way to not really disappoint. If I heard that, I'd be like, nah, it's fine. I don't, I never wanted but elder scrolls six to be exclusive. Mm-hmm. I, I never wanted that. I never cared. I, I, I it's weird when you buy a thing and then make everything exclusive. I think that's strange. So who cares? Yeah, who cares about any of that? Some things are so big that they've got to be like, you know, they're going to be cross platform. Oh, of course. Like, yeah. Can't... People saying like call of duty being exclusive. I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> like yeah. you really don't. If you think that's what they didn't like, that's $69 billion. You think they're changing to anything? They, they massively <laughs> overspent for this company by almost a third, I believe. Um, if I'm remembering the share prices correctly, uh, at time of sale, like they're they're not they're like you guys are doing what you're doing because we need to start making money on this thing. Yeah, yeah, it's I I feel like a lot of people think that they know they'll hear news and then like immediately get so worried about everything mm. and think oh this is gonna go this way and like I mean that would be that would be great for Xbox if seemingly if they were like we bought call of duty it's all on us now you have to buy an xbox but they're realistically going to lose so many players so many money so much money buy an xbox and it's too risky (laughs) although if i had the reins i would try and do that but you would you would lose so much money but the idea is like i mean i i think a big number of people would actually buy an xbox literally just to buy call of duty every year um so i think you would it would make sense if you're trying to go for market share, but maybe they stop, you know, maybe they don't give a shit about market share or maybe they need to make money now, not later. I don't know. I would have tried to do that, but of course they can't do that for another 10 years uh, per <laughs> the signatures of their agreements and these things. So I'm sure a lot of things fucked them up with, of course, how long the acquisition took to begin with all the leaks. I mean, there's so many things that went wrong with this that probably the Xbox team and Microsoft are looking at them like, we want like return and we're not getting it, you know? So yeah, you imagine Satya and everyone not Xbox is just pretty much done and being like, we spent lots of money on this. Like there is no exclusives. Satya always said he never cared about him. He never liked it. He never understood them. He, he, he wants everything on everything, which you would, you imagine someone in last place would say that, but, I mean, still, though, like it still holds weight because clearly they don't see it as a. A way of can- like they don't give two fucks, they, they're they like, no, we'll, we'll win them with our game pass. That That's why they'll come to us. Mm-hmm. Who cares if 
this is the only machine that plays Starfield. Right. They bank on they bank on something like Game Pass and then they talk about how they think they'll bring Game Pass to everything else. It's like, why? Hold something in your corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they definitely like need to hold said. something. Yeah, I like what you said about the uh, games anywhere thing. I think that that could be interesting if you play, especially if you even play with just like timed exclusives, because like PlayStation, I feel has done that more. Oh, than yeah. Most people. Yeah, and um, it's really. We, and it's funny you bring that up. We just talked about this. We haven't really seen Xbox do the timed exclusive since Rise of the Tomb Raider in oh, wow. tw- 2016 or whatever that was. Um, yeah, and that's kind of the last time they did that and they got lots of shit for it. And Phil always said he didn't, he never cared about that. Cause I assume they'd rather spend that money on making you a timed game pass thing or something versus <laughs> trying to get you on their platform for a few, a few months or whatever it is. That's so weird. Cause then even then you can't guarantee, like if you have a time game pass thing, you can't guarantee that that game's going to just be there forever. Game pass games come and go. Cause mm-hmm. it's like, you can't just at, I just feel like if they if they said this game is going to be with us for a couple of years as as an Xbox owner who bought a Series X the year it came out, I wouldn't mind if I had this game exclusive for like two years, two, three years or something. And then they were like, hey, it's going everywhere else. Like, as long as you gave me a reason to feel like I chose you for something. Yeah, I'd be happy. I just yeah. I think they should try that. Yeah, yeah. Timed exclusives, I think, make make the most sense if if they're trying to get any sort of exclusivity for a while. If they do it for, um, I would say even a year, that is enough time to be like, well, I have to buy one because I'm not waiting a year to play X right, game, true. whatever big game coming out, you know, Indiana Jones, Elder Scrolls, blah, 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 Call of Duty, mm-hmm. you know, uh, obviously that not, I'm not saying that's going to happen Call of Duty, but just as an example. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I I think I think you you say a good point. Yeah, just promise a amount of time that is reasonable. If it's three months, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Just make it day and date at that point. Uh, but if you if you make it a strict year, I I do find it funny. I'm curious. You know, I again love Xbox. I I'll play it primarily. Look at my fucking achievements. Don't don't come at me with with saying I don't like this platform. But like what's going to what's going to sell a lot of units that they have <laughs> like uh, uh you know no offense sea of thieves is huge that would probably be oh, big high if i rush no offense that's not selling millions of units uh, it's yeah. not unless this entire wave like really pushes that game into make making a lot of money like the pr of it happening makes it sell a lot of money but if that was just released and no one knew it was you know i don't think that would sell a lot probably sell enough to warrant making the game and all these things but like i'm curious what m- how much money they think they'll make out of this because not only do you have to release them on other platforms unless you negotiate really well which you probably can't because you're not in the position of power in the situation playstation is they're getting that 30 rip so every dollar is 30 cents off and that you know that's going to add up and you know once you factor in for all that is that enough money to like start making sense i don't know you know they would know they have all these internal documents they know how much x game would sell on their platform i mean maybe they release a halo on it and be like look let's let's really expand let's i mean let's make a big experiment master chief collection boom playstation let's see how much it sells and it would probably explode just so people can buy it on play. It's just, I mean, it, I would probably buy it again just to say I have Halo on PlayStation. As, you know, as just like this little <laughs> novelty thing that you get to do. It's you know, it's it's fun when you think about it that way. But you, and you also imagine like it's what I imagined this was going to happen in the first place with Call of Duty. You know, you you go to PlayStation and you're like, oh, I'll pick it for seventy bucks, and then like maybe there's some way that they advertise game pass on these on this on the games themselves or something maybe it just says game studios and then some sort of messaging telling people oh you know remember it's on game pass you could have just spent x money and maybe that maybe that this is like a phishing like maybe you know eventually some people be like hey you know i'm only buying two games a year and two of them are on game pass so why don't i just buy an xbox i don't really care you know the casual market Maybe that's why. I don't know. There's so many 
there's so many reasons why they could be doing this. And of course, the main reason is they need money. That's that's the reason that Game Pass makes them if I don't know if you uh, if you guys covered the financials from the FTC that was leaked. They make very little money off of Game Pass uh, when you account for what they need to put on the service, right? You imagine they're still not making any money, which is not surprising, but it's like not making li- like very much any money. It, it can be averaged to like two fifty million a month with just consoles, not including PC. We don't know PC specifically, but you know that doesn't make sense when you gotta buy these games for a certain period of time. And then every now and then they had a big game that costs probably hundreds of millions of dollars or at least a hundred million to get on the service. I don't know. I said a lot there. What do you think? Party stuff. All their first party stuff goes there. Yeah. You have to justify losing game sales that way. So maybe they double dip now. Yeah. And what would really suck is like to have that burnout at some point, like just to realize, Oh, we're really losing money on this thing. Like at the very least to have, have some of the games that come every year be really uh, not every year (laughs) every drop of game pass be like not good (laughs) like you look at games with gold they started running out of games eventually yeah they (laughs) They clearly had no money to do that because they were like we're gonna like keep doing this until garbage is on this Mm -hmm. and then when we take it away no one's gonna care because like it hasn't been good for a year yeah, so that that worked out well for them. But when you have Game Pass be like, it, they, it's so weird that they don't make a ton of money. Like in terms of like music, it's it's dropping an album compared to touring. Like you yeah. know you're gonna make money off of it, but it's not where you make your money. And that's crazy considering they're they advertise it heavily on like every kind of game show, like a like award show or whatever. There's there's montages about game pass and it's just like and they get good games i mean for for me i'm a i'm much bigger like an indie game person and when i see a majority of them come out and get advertised as coming to game pass i'm like well i'm happy i have an xbox like this makes things worth it for me but then you look at something where i feel like Right now, it's never been more true that Xbox has no games, so to speak, because they really don't have all the like a bunch of first party things to bank on. And that's weird. Like their their marketing right now is very strange on what they're deciding to put their money into. And um, to go way back when you were like, what do they really have right now? I really think like their next big thing is Fable whenever that drops. Yeah, you imagine what they're banking on is this plan in like two years, because right now, as it stands, the exclusives we have, what money are they going to be making? Like, Mm -hmm. unless they release a Halo or a Gears, which is uh, why would you? I mean, I really don't think you should do that. I think it's unwise. But if they do do that, that's you do that one. That's one. That's one big paycheck, Mm -hmm. you know, so and maybe that's all they need. I don't know, but. Again, we're all pontificating here, but yeah, you know, that's a good point to bring up. And and then maybe this is to do it now so you don't have to explain it when Indiana Jones come out, when Call of Duty yeah. comes out, when, you know, we just keep naming games because they bought so much at this point. <laughs> Fable, like yeah. you said, maybe that maybe that'll be multi-platform. I don't know. Who knows? We'll be we'll know soon. Thank God. And then we I can make a video and bitch about it. Yeah, because I think they did say there'll be an update within a week yes. on what's going on. So fingers crossed. It's good. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, and next up, this was uh, pretty surprising. It kind of came out of nowhere, uh, but it's interesting. I'm curious to see your thoughts on this. IGN has unionized or, uh, or I guess they're unionizing technically. Uh, so they're creating a IGN creators guild. They are banding together and using their weight to, create a union and right now they're working on being recognized by zip davis their parent company uh there isn't much in terms of what i can read here because i couldn't find like a letter there's a petition they did a video that i noticed on um uh kind of funny kind of funny games daily specifically their their daily news show they did a little thing there i watched a lot of it i cool it it's the the it seemed like the core thing was they want to 
keep things good the way they the way it is. Uh, it seems like they're pretty rational with what they are, or at least on the surface of what they expect from this. Not too much to add. I, I, it's funny that IGN is the first to do this because they are the one, the biggest, and two, yeah. you would imagine if they're, you know, the highest people are the ones that are doing the best out of all these people, right? Are out of a game spot, out of the Kotaku's, out of the VGCs, you know, the, this is the site. So it's funny that they're the first because uh, you imagine they're the most profitable. I I would love to have seen like a, a demand list or not, I mean, not in the demand list, but something saying like, what, what are they doing? Maybe they're just doing this to be safe. It seemed like that was the vibe of the videos. Like this is just to keep things good and keep status quo. Mm. Uh, what do you have anything to add? I I mean it was it was definitely a surprise to see them be. They are one of the biggest. I would say that their overall popularity has definitely dwindled. Um, oh, of course. Like in terms of just people who really tune into the. I mean, you know, they used to have tons of like original content that people really went crazy about. Now, obviously, people come and go. But they still have a really good team there. I was super excited to see that they're going to to have this like protection, which is awesome. Yeah. Um Yeah, I mean, it did just seem like a hey, this is a thing now. And I guess I I'll be honest, I don't know entirely how unions work. So when it was like, we're a union now, and then it was like petition. I was like, what are we Aren't you? Don't you just get to wake up and say I'm a union? Now? Kind, kind of. They need to be now recognized by the company, and then there's a bunch of legal things. They're technically protected now legally uh, because okay. they sent in to the the. I think they're under the News Guild. Is that what that is? Oh, yes. God, Gizmodo. They're <laughs> they're under the the News Guild, and and they're working with, I believe, another union to like, yeah, the CWA, which is. I would have to look up, I have to remind myself what that is, but they, 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 they're pretty much working on being recognized by Zip Davis. I believe that's why okay. the petitions are even a thing. So they're fully recognized as a body of IGN. They needed 5,000. I think they're like 4,000 something. So, I mean, they're Sweet. close. They're, they'll get it. Uh, we'll see what this means for them. I, I hope, uh, you know, I like IGN. I don't go there other than for this show specifically. Um, mm. They, Oh my god! How do I say this? I'm trying to be nice. Um, they 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 have lost a lot of the reason that made them relevant. They they're not really super relevant anymore. They struggled. There's it's the same problem with everyone else. They struggled to make compelling content. Uh, there I don't care about reviews because one I'm just going to buy the game if I want to see how it is, and two you get a general consensus of what people think. So I don't need to read whoever is reviewing X game on IGN to know if I need to buy a game anymore. I did that when I was like 15 because $60 was important. You know, I really needed to make sure that game was, was good. And also it was a completely different relationship. I'm not sure how their podcasts do, but that was pretty much the huge reason they were huge with, um, when they were doing, uh, when the PlayStation yeah, side of them were really big, but that's not a thing. Cause PlayStation doesn't really interact with these people anymore. They, they, they kind of interact with their own bodies. So at this point, it, it does kind of feel like they exist because their name is IGN. Same with GameSpot and all these things. They've just established themselves and things like SEOs and all these things will just keep them alive. But I don't know. I hope I hope for the best. Maybe this makes maybe this helps them make better content or something. But I haven't tuned into IGN to actually consume content to a reasonable degree in a very long time. And oh. hopefully that fixes for them because why do I go to an IGN when I can get that same content everywhere else? And also, you know, the whole vibe of, of a lot of these companies are a bit off because at the end of the day, none of them are actually doing journalism. A lot of them are Jason Schreier. I think Rebecca Valentine is actually really good. And she worked at IGN. I think she does some good work too, but we have a big problem. And I say this all the time on every video I'm sure it's getting annoying, but journal we have a big problem with video game journalism. We don't really do it. Um, reading PRs and writing PR and doing all these things, writing up those things is not journalism. It's just 
you're just you're just a secondary mouthpiece for PR. I don't know if you reporter. agree or disagree with anything I'm saying, but what are you thinking here? Because to me, you know, I, I'm I'm happy for them. Hopefully, this makes content and IGN better because right now I think they're pretty stagnant in terms of one talent. I don't know anyone there really anymore other than Rebecca Valentine, of course, Ryan McCaffrey. I I love that guy. Po- Podcast Unlocked, mm-hmm. of course. All and many many things in in his uh writings and all that, but you know they've lost a lot of people to frankly better things and uh it's hard to not see things for what it is when you see someone who hosted podcasts beyond uh go and work for a naughty dog that's fucking weird when i see that and it makes me not want to consume anything you do because why would that happen yeah yeah i think the biggest the biggest takeaway that i've been seeing in you know in the game journalism space is that it's a time for smaller outlets like these people to really rise up. And I mean, you had um, Nick, Nick Calandra, right? Yeah. I had him on like, and that, and that's awesome that these groups of people are able to leave a bigger company. That's not treating them right and go and make something. And like their, their, their journey over the past couple of months has been awesome to watch on Twitter. Oh yeah. It's just like, it just gives you hope that like, even though they were at a big company and big names, like they're able to still thrive and you're able to just, if you're, if you're just passionate about the, the stuff you're doing, you can do something. And um, so like seeing IGN unionize is, is awesome because you've got these people realizing hey our company could also screw us over <laughs> and yeah in any moment which is good protection. which is good they have that because if davis doesn't give two fucks about ign probably so it's yeah. good that you have this you you know giving workers a seat at the table is very good i think frankly if you're uh if you're public you should probably always unionize it's not that easy and many people try to do it and it fucks up because it's so hard but mm-hmm. union, unions are good because at the end of the day we've said it before companies don't give two fucks about you especially if you work for them no it's and and it's it's great to try to to do it before you get knocked down yeah because i mean i bet I bet in hindsight, if you had told the escapist people like, hey, if you did this, <laughs> you wouldn't get so you would make heavily a hit. shit ton of money if you leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's uh, it's it's hard to know what's ever going to happen. Your job protection is a mess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In my interview with um, Nick Calandra, he told me a, a good bit of and it's just clear that like they don't know what they're, you know, when you're under someone like that, they just don't know what they're talking about. And then when he left, he had full control and he was able to kind of rally everyone from escapists to the second wing thing. And it clearly has worked out. I mean, he makes probably. I mean, he might be making 10 times what he was doing over there. Who knows? Like, and he was, you know, he wasn't being paid well, frankly, uh, for his talents and good for him. He got out of there. He exploded a company. He's like the number one video game news pay i don't know what you call them but video games news patreon or whatever ever i think mm-hmm. uh i don't know how they doing over and over again but i know that first month was I- insane for them oh, uh, yeah. so good for them and i, I welcome more independent ventures because you know it's it, we see it with ign although i don't agree that oh, let me back up a little bit you see it with ign with things when they try to do things and they're they're not independent so they, they get hit the moment they go to try to do something they tried to um oh my god what was it was it a palestine side thing oh, yeah. and they immediately got shut down by their parent company which like yeah because you're not you know you can't do that they, yeah. they don't want to fucking see that on their home page so mm-hmm. maybe maybe ign will do it i don't know I'm, I'll be, it's funny that um nick got so popular after being fired. I wonder if there's a similar situation that will happen in this IGN situation. Maybe it all falls apart. They all leave and go do something else. I mean, you have people like, like Alana Pierce, for example, like you have people that leave IGN and become huge. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, they were, they were there, but they obviously had things on the side. And then like, I don't know. I've followed a lot of people who have just like the old guard of IGN that were part of all that content creation when I was growing up. And now they're all 
all over the place and it's just it's awesome to see that but then you also see that they didn't look back so fondly at those days <laughs> and it's mm. like oh well let's hope that uh providing some protection for the new guard will make work life better for them so yeah here's to them here's hoping it all goes well next up originally poured by bloomberg square enix president takahishi takashi takashi kiryu I butchered that probably. And I was hearing a financial report on Monday that, quote, we are reviewing from scratch what the organizational structure is and what the best way is to implement implement the contents of the pipeline, end quote. And according to Bloomberg, this is an attempt for the Japanese company to focus on more in-house development versus outsourcing to external studios. The new development style will focus on high-profile titles to try and increase both profit margins and quality. This is in direct response to last September's huge stock fall of about 30% versus its peak of last year. The prior reasons were cited as a lot of the damage as well as the Final Fantasy 16 not selling as well as high as well as their very high projections forecasted. I wanted to really pick your brain about this one because one, we see Square Enix both having success in many of the venues, but also just kind of floundering in a lot of ways with many of their releases i mean if you want to look up their releases of the last year the last few years and you really do see them just kind of releasing things on top of each other releasing a lot of games being kind of a mess and bringing it all in and ensuring um frankly quality in a lot of these things versus your dia fields versus your um, I mean, a lot of their failures were, of course, like a lot of their uh, so uh, not a lot, but a good bit of them were a bit of their Western ventures. But of course, with Forspoken and, and things of that nature. But mm. seeing a lot of these games like that, do you feel Chronicles was one of them? Um, one of the uh, games mentioned you imagine Square doing so good with their highs, but their lows are still not being managed correctly. So maybe a return to to the table of how they organize these things in the first place might be one of the only things really holding them back from being a really, really big player in the game. And they already are very, very big. I mean, they pretty much are Japan in terms of like video game publishing. So mm -hmm. seeing them take, take this more in house and maybe releasing less titles, that'd be nice. Like, Hey, let's release less, but do more with what we're going to be releasing because their release schedule was insanity. So hopefully we see a change in how they work because like I said, when they're when they're on the top, they do great. Their Final Fantasy VII remakes, their rebirths, their crisis cores, all these things working well for them. But when they do these weird side games where it's clearly like the the C minus team working on them and it's not really working well and they got so many different uh, partners in external studios and probably ghost studios and all these things. I don't know. What What do you think of any of this? Do you see this as being a positive for them going forward or? Uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm just like trying to cycle through their list of games because I'm like, I don't follow them like super closely, but I know that they they spread themselves so thin across like various, like I'm even just looking at their partner you know like their other studios and right. they just got so much going on at all times yes it is really really crazy and i mean a lot it, of them being the same type of games and you're releasing them together it doesn't make any exactly. sense it see it almost seems like they were trying to clear out clear out the pipeline to then revise everything to be like look get everything out and then we got to figure our shit out because this is a mess like it like I mean, you imagine some of these titles, do you feel Chronicles, you know, Forspoken, you imagine they, they sold nothing. Oh yeah. I swear, it, you know, at least nothing in terms of what they're used of to, what, and they, what they could yeah, be doing and what they could be. And, yes. Of course. I'm not comparing these to like a final fantasy seven remake or anything like that, but what they yeah. should and could be doing if they spent more time on these games. Yeah. It's really, it's really crazy. Like I'm looking at some of these names. I don't even, I don't even remember them. Like that's how that's exactly how, like, crazy. And you're just like, uh, why? Like, yeah, focus on, on your big things. You could just be, 
I don't want to say they could just be the Final Fantasy people because I know that they have big things. I mean, there's like, is is Dragon Quest Dragon Quest always them? Yes. Okay, so like they've got something like that, and like they've got they have, they have other big, things, obviously. Big things, yeah. But I don't know. Just focus on them. Stop trying to like branch out and try new things. It was just such a horrible thing to say. You never want to say that to anyone. Yeah. But like <laughs> it, it, it's it's proving. Exactly. And I think that maybe that's why they're making this statement. It's like they are that they are getting that in their face that it's not working and they've got to they've got to figure something out. Yeah, yeah, and and it's good that they're actually figuring it out now when they have these big successes and these things and and they're not on like death store or something trying to piece together their production pipeline and how they work on everything. So I'm happy for this. Good for them. We'll see more yeah. soon. So there was there's some things about Toys for Bob. So of course Toys for Bob, Activision Blizzard um, studio. There was rumors that they closed. That's not true. So it looks like a lot of the actual studio themselves closed, but it's going to be going strictly to remote work after this point. So they'll be working remotely. Not the entire studio is not done. It just it looks like they closed the actual literal studio and did did lay some people off. But this, the actual studio does still exist. Not much else to add there. Unless you have something to add, I'll be moving on. No, it's just I Toys for Bob has been surprisingly like a big name in my life because then they do like they did Skylanders, right? And they did. Yeah. Um, and then they did, they of course, the Crash Bandicoot game. Uh, C- yeah. Crash 4, I believe is what they did. Yeah. So that's just that's sad. <laughs> that's <all. laughs> <laughs> and then they were moved into uh, in-house to help with Call of Duty. Right, right, right. Which, yay. All right. <laughs> yay. Disney, the giant media conglomerate, has made a giant move with Epic Games as they have put in a $1.5 billion stake into the Fortnite developer. The CEO of Bob Iger, uh, sorry, the CEO of Disney, Bob Iger, said Wednesday that, quote, uh, said this quote i think well sorry let me back this up (laughs) quote when i saw gen z and gen alpha and millennials the amount of time they were spending in terms of total media screen time on video games it was stunning equal to what they spend on tv and movies the conclusion i reached we have to be there in quote (laughs) so very funny because what year is it what do you mean you just you you just found this out oh people are playing Ooh. games whoa he's like, <laughs> like eyes <laughs> popping up like, okay it, it, it seemed like such like a half-hearted response it's see like it's like yeah of course so he probably actually didn't mean <laughs> that and just given a quote to to move on with his life to be minimally fair to him he's like new a newer I mean, obviously he was around for years, but then they just rehired him like last year, right? Yeah, something. yeah, and and I'm sure, <laughs> um, and I'm sure it's one of those things where he, he probably didn't come up with it. Someone came up to him and was like, "Hey, look, this is how much money we're making on this. This is how much we could. <laughs> this is gonna work." And he was like, "Yeah, go ahead," because uh, right, of course, this is Fortnite we're talking about. But let's grab this quote and then we'll get into it. Uh, This is from the CNBC announcement, quote, Disney was one of the first companies to believe in the potential of bringing their worlds together with ours in Fortnite. And they use Unreal Engine across their platform End quote, said Epic Games founder and CEO Tim Sweeney in a statement, quote, now we're collaborating on something entirely new to build a persistent, open and interparable ecosystem that will bring together the Disney and Fortnite communities, end quote. Graydon, what what the hell is this? <laughs> it's a fucking cash grab. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, um, I don't know. It's initially I thought this is kind of whatever. It's Disney X Fortnite. They've been doing this anyway. And then I think it was this morning I woke up to a video that was like like a Disney World esque montage of like here's all of our disney properties here's fortnite land and then it zooms out fortnite land you... <laughs> fortnite <laughs> land. Oh, the world of what's the world called what what world like disney world fortnite no like in fortnite it's got to have like a name right uh no i think it's called the island or something i think it's literally called that 
I don't think it has like a name. Oh, wow. That's weird. I, I, if it does, I, I'm not the guy to ask. <laughs> but... <laughs> so then it zooms out of the island and you have like other ones around it. And it was like, it literally looked like they just attached Disney World to Fortnite. And then I started seeing comments. Oh, this is what Disney Infinity wants to be. This could be like a 4.0 for them. And then I'm thinking like th there's so many different ways they could take this, especially with the fact that Fortnite is now more than just Fortnite. You've got a rhythm game. You have a racing game like it could really be an entirely different game under the realm of Fortnite. That is just a new Disney video game. And I mean, honestly, if they keep. If they keep my the Fortnite to a minimum, I'm on board. <laughs> I, I don't want to have to like love Fortnite to do a to have a Disney game, but it really depends on what they want to do with it. Like I'll I'm I'm waiting with bated breath on what this all could mean. I saw this and immediately thought, what are they doing? This is interesting. It's a lot of money. It's not like a little bit, right? They're putting a stake and they yeah. want to work with something. So they're getting a little piece of Epic. They're investing further. And what I came to it is I imagine this as a metaverse E type of thing. Clearly, they don't want to say that word because uh, I'm it is tainted beyond all hell at this point. Right. Mm -hmm. But it seemed almost like a hey, look, this is Fortnite, right? They already have people in Fortnite, which is weird. I think there's like Night Nightmare Before Christmas is in there with a gun. It's like I'm surprised yeah, they did that. But a bunch of there's Star right. Wars and Marvel. Yeah, they have Star Wars makes sense in these things. Like Marvel, yeah, you know they they can be violent, but like they put like one of their cartoons in there, which is weird. But <laughs> anyways, um, seeing all this, they they probably saw the beginnings, and then of course Fortnite becoming not just Fortnite, but a marketplace in of itself, right? There's you're seeing Fortnite become Lego Fortnite. You're seeing it become the rhythm game, like you mentioned. They have Fortnite Creative, where they're paying people to make these games and these things. Mm. Like depending on how popular it is, you know, you get paid a certain amount of money. You're seeing all this, and they probably looked at it like, well, we have a chance of making a, like you said, like a Disney World Fortnite, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Maybe it's a game inside of Fortnite. Maybe it's a experience where you, you pay ten dollars and go to Disney World or something. I, don't know, who know, I mean, who knows? It, it, this this could be this could be a lot. This could be one game. This could be one experience. This could you know, this could be a bunch. This could be not a lot. I, I don't know. But you imagine this is like what was that? <laughs> it could even turn into something like a way to watch movies, a way to yeah. take in like their like a Disney Plus type of collaboration. It could be yeah. so much. It could it could be much. We don't have really much to go on other than like you said, they had that video where you see like Fortnite thing comes out and it literally does look like Disney World concept art. <laughs> like so, so you imagine at some point that's the idea is maybe there's worlds that you go to in this, or maybe 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 it is a Disney Infinity where it's meant to be this collaboration game that you're going to these worlds to do something i don't know who who knows i it it could like you said literally be anything because disney is so much this could be a game this could be media this could be both this could be all of it at once this could be multiple different projects <laughs> cool <laughs> i guess more fortnite i mean I mean, the, the, the more you say about it, the more it like becomes clear in my head of things it could be. And really, like, if it was something like Disney Infinity brings the real sandbox experience to Fortnite. And then you also have like, I don't know, a theater where if you're a Disney Plus subscriber, you can watch things in there with your friends. Like, <laughs> put those two things. I'm in. sorry. That's just the thought of that is so weird. It's but like Netflix metaverse. on 360. <laughs> right. It is, but like literally in the Hor Facebook Horizon worlds or whatever, you can watch like a tennis match live or basketball or something and then look to your left and right and there's avatars there and you're watching yeah. on a big It's wild. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. hate that it's I hate that it's a second life type of thing like literally oh, yeah, yeah. who needs real world 
Yeah, yeah, I, I am. Um, I did this when they. Do you remember when they did the Dragon Ball Z thing? I don't know if you're a fan or but or if you saw this. Did you did you see they did like a co- crossover? So I yeah. I logged in because I wanted to see, and I I didn't even play the game. They had Dragon Ball Super, which is the the, the latest anime at the time, mm-hmm. playing in games that you could go in, and what you did was you joined. You sat, you sat around, you saw people, you can interact with stuff. And mm-hmm. then there was a part where you could stand and hit a button and just watch it full screened in Fortnite. That's it was like, very strange. It's like the concerts they do, too. Yeah, yeah it's well, like, like the it's concerts. I've done one of those. Of yeah. It's Ariana wild. Grande singing at me while I fly in the air and all this <laughs> shit. It's clear that they're trying to be this metaverse thing, which, funny enough, this was like, and we've had, I mean, the way metaverses are described, we've had metaverses before. PlayStation Home is the famous example everyone brings up. Mm-hmm. And we're having one here with with this thing. And like I said, clearly they're staying far away from that term because that's what it is. But they're like, no, 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 no. We're, it'll be an interactive experience for all kind of shit. Mm-hmm. So, And I think that that's not terrible. I'm learning something about myself while talking about oh, no. this. But oh, no. like it's it's not the worst thing in the world. I think it was awful when it was like the actual metaverse included buying like crypto houses and stuff like that. <laughs> is the mess. Do you remember that? I for, I forgot about that. You just hit like a memory spot. Like like like, like, like they were like the you can house. buy the crypto house next to Snoop Dogg. I was like <laughs> you are y'all are some dumb motherfuckers. If you like like I I I was behind nfts in the giant overview sense of like if we lived in this metaverse place sure yeah you could justify buying digital art and being able to prove it but we are nowhere close Mm -hmm. to giving two shits about that like it doesn't make any sense right now we're not living in a we we don't all have vr headsets on and like i want to be able to show somebody my piece of art on the wall like that doesn't make any sense (laughs) But then if you if you look at it this way, it feels less dystopian and more just like, hey, I want to like PlayStation Home. Hey, I kind of want to watch this movie with my friend, but he lives across the country. We can go and play Rocket League racing and then go, and then go watch go. Moana 2. Yeah, Moana 2. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. That was announced, I think, today. Yeah, you go watch <laughs> Moana 2 with your best bro. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, I love that. I, it is yeah that's probably what's gonna happen it's probably gonna be i i think it will be a lot of things versus like just like the one thing i imagine they will eventually maybe you pay 20 bucks and go to disney world digitally i don't i mean i don't know maybe you go like hit maybe you get on a um ride and it switches to a video of the ride and you ride i i I mean so much it it is weird we don't have like a Fortnite vr at all yet like oh, you imagine like that that's habits. in that you imagine they're figuring that out to make it make sense. <laughs> I don't know how you would make that make sense other than well, a other mode. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe that's the end goal. Uh, uh <sighs> Jesus. There's so much. Let's not forget Fortnite just revived rock band for everybody. Like, like yeah. right. They they couldn't even do that themselves. <laughs> Fortnite that's did that. Crazy. People are playing rhythm games again. Like it's uh, 20 2009. It's crazy. I just I just tweeted that yesterday. I was like, I can't believe that Rock Band Four because Wario sixty four was saying like, hey, Rock Band Four is ten bucks. I'm yep. like, who the hell's buying Rock Band Four? It's been out for like six years. The but fucking like, fifteen year old who just found out it existed and loved it in Fortnite, probably. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. and is gonna buy another plastic guitar next month, yep. like from PDP. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> It's become a games as a service type of thing. This rock band, and I, I love it. I'm here for it. Oh yeah, yeah, revolution. Go off. I love it. <laughs> Go off. I, 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 I think I've exhausted what I wanted to say. But to yeah. to to end it off, this is um, I think this is quite a big deal. Clearly, with the amount of money they spent, I I think we're gonna see a lot of whatever this is. I don't know what, but whatever it is, I think we're gonna see a lot of it, and it's gonna probably be weird. It's it's probably gonna be like, yo, what the fuck? Do you see that Goofy can put a shotgun barrel in Mickey's mouth now, or something? You know, it's gonna be weird shit like that, probably. And then hit the gritty. Yeah, he hit the gritty <laughs> on his corpse. It was wild. <laughs> oh, that's 
<laughs> that's the show for the week. Date updates. Demo is out now for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. If you'd like to go play, you can play that. Apparently, there's going to be more more to the demo released over time. I don't know. I'm saying far away from that game, so I apologize. I'm not going to have full details. I did not watch that state of play. Hell no. No, I'm staying far away. Do not want to be shown every aspect of the game. It looks like that state of play was very in-depth. Very happy I did not watch that. Uh, but you can go what, play the demo now. Apparently, you can play it. It does not work like it. you transfer your game to, you demo to the game but you'll be able to skip the demo in the game so not exactly how it works but oh, okay. apparently it works similar to that way i like that kind of thing me too I, it gives you a reason to actually play it i think um i do this uh with a few games that do that i'll i'll probably play the demo the day before that or two days before the game comes out mm. play it beat it and then oh you know straight into the next game which would be fun yeah Spider-Man 2 gets a new game pl- uh, game p- sorry let me blah, 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 blah. Spider-Man 2 gets a new game plus mode March 7th. Now, as I do when they release, I go over the Game Pass games. Uh, we went over the PlayStation Plus games last week and now we have some Game Pass games to talk about. Available as of recording a, a new chard cloud console and P- PC. That's a terrible name. <laughs> this is everything coming the, oh, nope, nope. This is still out now. T- Train Sim World 4 Cloud Console and PC. Uh, as of today, Madden NFL 24 Console and PC. Very cool. You get to play that. Of course, you have to have EA Play, which is with either PC Game Pass or Ultimate. Very good game. Resident Evil 3 Cloud Console and PC coming out February 13th. Very good game if you have not played that. Short, but I think short in a good way. I played that recently, a little bit before I think 4 came out, and I, lo- I loved my time with it. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, Cloud Console and PC, February 14th. Did you like Bloodstained? Did you play that? It's I, a Metroidvania I've fan. I've never. And... Yeah, I've never, but I I will finally get to. That's I, awesome. I, yeah, I tried it out when it came out. Um, I own it, but it it was fine, I feel like. Um, okay. Maybe I'll go back to it. The beginning didn't really grab me. Uh, it was, you okay. know, it, it's clear what Bloodstained is. I loved, actually, funny enough, Curse of the Moon way, way more. Um, I don't know if you played the Curse of the Moon game, but that is no, no, so good. That's it's it's straight up a ripoff of Castlevania, which makes sense. Of course, he's the creator, but it, it's literally what you think of as Castlevania. Play Cur- Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. It is Castlevania. And the second one's out. I have not played that one, though. A little to the left. I'm very excited <laughs> for this. Cloud I'm console and so- PC, February 15th. <laughs> Uh, I'm so stoked for that. Yeah, I have to read this. A cozy puzzle game where everyday messes become pleasing puzzle arrangements. Stack documents, sort postcards, and solve all kinds of puzzles across over 100 levels. But watch out for a playful cat who might stop by to swipe away all your hard work. Awesome. <laughs> it's, it's so good. good for them for that <laughs> description. That's a good description. It makes me want to try the game. Plate up. Cloud Console PC, February 15th. Return to Grace. Cloud Console and PC, February 20th. Uh, and then, as a reminder, MLB The Show at 24 is coming to Game Pass whenever that comes out. Mm-hmm. And this is everything leaving. This is a very short list for the month. Everything leaving okay. February 15th. So if you'd like to keep these games, you can save your uh, 20% by buying them before they leave the service. That is Galactic Civilizations 3 for PC. Oh my god. Opus Echo of Star Song Cloud Console and PC. Ooh. That is your Game Pass update for pretty much the month. Or at nice. least half half of the Game Pass update for the month. Briefly, I have a question for you. Go ahead. I may. Um please. The the next fest will probably be over by the time this comes out. But have okay. you played anything in it? The I, demo? I haven't I haven't. I should have. Uh but I have not. I've been so busy with of course, life and also Final Fantasy seven mm-hmm. uh, playing through that. Is, is there any anything good from that that you have you have um, you messed with it? I, I know people love and I love that Steam does that. It's such a cool idea. Xbox tried doing that and I liked it, but they don't, don't really do it anymore. The Xbox one is the only time I've ever had my Xbox crash like a demo wow. actually shut my Xbox off. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was playing Skatebird. And yeah. that's one of the times where I really thought I was like, wow, I'm playing an unfinished game like by a lot. But like mm-hmm. like this is like 
here's the here's the model here's where you would skate this is the game like go play i'm like i was playing like oh my god like you i hope people know this is not the game when they play this like it won't be quite like this skateboard was such a letdown because i played the alpha for that and kind of the similar manner on pc it was like go into your file explorer like your demo is is just a little file yeah it's a file yeah and then the game came on game pass and it was so not it was like very similar to it. They yeah. didn't add. Much. It wasn't really. Yeah, it wasn't. It didn't feel done at all. <laughs> I uh, remember um, looking at it and going, nah, <laughs> like, yeah. no, no, thanks. Um, but I will a uh, shout out to um, it's called Tales of Kenzera Zao. Oh, I want to I, w- I was I want to play that. I want to uh, play that when it comes out uh, May or something like that. I, I think so. It's very it's very soon. Um it's it's great it's so good i didn't know it was gonna be strong metroidvania vibes but it feels like like jumping back into prince of persia um super well acted like the story is very like african culture heavy so it's Mm. like got this just cool really cool vibe as is the music like there's a lot of like instrumental and like vocalizing and the music it's so good like just every bit of it is so good I can't and wait. then you swap between two different there's a ranged attack and a melee based like it, it just feels oh i want more <laughs> i can't I, can, I can't i can't wait frankly <laughs> yeah. I, I cannot wait for that game it looked so good and it's so soon so i i, I even though it's tempting I, I i think i'll stay away yeah oh it's yeah just be excited for when that comes out now that's the actual show for the week. Now we have what's queued. Now, of course, this is where I ask my co-host and then I detail myself, what is queued up for the week? Now, what is queued up for you? This, of course, can be a game, a TV show, a movie, a podcast, a oh. manga, comic book, a book, anything. Grace, what do you, think? what do you have queued up? Wow. Let's see. Um, I'm going to jump back into Lost and in Random, so I've got that. I've got a half hour left in No Time to Die. I've been watching No Time which to is Die, the, my first James Bond movie ever. Oh um, yeah, that's right, that's right. Is that the new one? Yeah, it's the newest one. Yeah, I, yeah. It just looked really good, and then I was like, "Well, I want to watch something." So I've been trying to just go through a list of old movies. I've old movies of movies I missed out on. <laughs> old movies <laughs> a year ago. <laughs> so I hope maybe this is the week I finish uh, everything everywhere all at once. I, I, I still haven't can't. watched that. I, it's on me and my wife's like watch list, you know, like to mm-hmm. make sure we watch this. I, I, I we just need to sit down and do it. Yeah, it's good. I just I got to jump back into it. I I do things in bite sized bits. That's how yeah. I live life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what do you have queued? Oh, thank you for asking. You're literally the first person probably to ever really actually throw that back to me correctly. <laughs> um, uh, so quite a bit. Um, I, so I'm finishing my Baruto watch through, which, of course, is the sequel animates to Naruto Shippuden. Uh, it's fine. It's got a lot. It's 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 the common thing with most animes. It's a mess in terms of uh, pacing. And, and you know, it, it, if it's not manga, it's usually not very good. And even the manga part that I just got to is not very good. He's in like a prison and these things undercover. It's not very good, but okay. I'm still going to finish it. Um, I've the past arcs that I watched. Uh, I guess I won't spoil it, but certain things where they pay homage to pre- the, the, the original series was very good. Mm. So I'll be finishing that probably this week. Cause I just don't, I don't have that much. And also I'm skipping a lot of filler just cause I'm not, I'm not, I'm not oh, devoting really? that much time to this. Uh, so doing that, finishing Final Fantasy seven, I'm my goal is to finish that before next week, because that gives me plenty of time to then go into rebirth and then the DLC before the game, because that will give me two weeks to, to eat that game alive. So that's the plan. Have that finished by next week, hopefully, or at least very close to beating it. I again about halfway through, I imagine. I think I'm halfway through what would be disc two if uh, that tells people at home where I am. Uh, again, very good game. I'm. F- I finally got to the part where like the game. The game feels alive once you pass. I would say, like six to eight hour mark, and then the game really kind of pops off, which is a lot of time to give a game to activate. But I was not letting this game. I've tried. I don't know about you if you have games like this, but I've tried Final Fantasy VII five times in my life, probably. 
Yeah, and just that begin that beginning is just so it's slow. Like the beginning's cool because you're you know putting the bombs. But from someone from my generation, and I don't know if I can speak for you necessarily, but for someone from me, like it's just that specific era is sometimes so hard to go to because the the the, the almost polygonal aspect of how they had to make the game was is so distracting sometimes. Uh, the mm-hmm. cutscenes look amazing for for the time, uh, but. But actually looking at the character models in these things, like their eyes look like they're like stickered on. They look like triangles pieced together. I mean, yeah. Barrett, I love Barrett, but he looks so silly looking like he looks like he, <laughs> a giant with tiny legs. He's and, you know, kind of bubbly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He looks like a yeah, he looks like a bunch of bubbles kind of put together with tiny legs. Um, <laughs> so it, it took a while, but it really does have me now. I can't wait to play more. I want to unlock everyone's limits. I want to find out Ultima weapons. I want to kill the, I guess uh, I, I'll just call them the weapons in this game. Uh, I, I, I want to really eat this game alive. I'm probably not going to do everything because I heard it's ridiculous. Um, one okay. thing, have you played Final Fantasy VII? So I've tried seven many times like you and I have just I've cursed it as I will never like this game. Yeah, I don't blame people, honestly. I've played almost every Final Fantasy game with rare exceptions. I I I, th- I think this is good. I get why people like it, but it, I, I doubt it'll end in my like top three of my favorites. Mm-hmm. It's actually um, eight is in my list this year to play like through to the end for the first time because i remember really liking eight and i just want to i want to play it <laughs> yeah yeah do the whole thing yeah yeah i have yeah. the remaster i think on switch and i'll i'll play it eventually yeah that's good i am um, this is like my i think one of also like historically just said like a big blind spot so i'm glad i am actually liking it because i was worried i was just abandoned again and i would love to know if someone out there knows why or if, if and maybe I need to just research this. I was curious. I, I almost kind of wished you played it so I could ask you, but like, why the fuck does this game have so many mini games? It has so many mini games. There's so many things. There's like, I won't, I guess I won't spoil it, but there's one where you have, there's really like you snowboard. I won't say what, why, but there's a snowboarding mini game. There's, there's a, I won't say what you do, but there's a thing you do underwater. That's a mini game. There's an entire place where you go play mini games. Like there's just so many. I'm like, did, did, did whoever developed this game, or not whoever? We know who did it. Sorry, but like, <laughs> who, when they were making this, I wonder why. Like that was the like we want this game to have like all these little aspects, so it feels like you're really. You assume it has to, so like it feels like you're actually doing what you're doing. Maybe I don't know, but like when you <laughs> see high score and time limit everywhere, I'm like. What was the end goal of this? I don't, I don't know. I don't <laughs> so know. Weird. But it's it's still good. The dialogue I think is actually I, I feel like underrated for people. Like when people tell me about this, like I don't know. It feels like they don't really talk about the dialogue that much. They just t- talk about the moments and the musics and the swelling of certain aspects of the game and Seth Roth and all these things. But I feel like the dialogue has been downplayed. I like when people are talking. I love the banter. I do wish some characters were introduced more. Um. Uh, I like the Vincent character, but it doesn't feel like he's really in the story. It kind of feels like he's just on the side, like, like, hi, I'm I'm here to help. Like, but he's not like in the story like everyone else is. It feels like everyone else has a part. But Vince is just like. Hi, like in the distance and in like cutscenes, not really adding anything, which sucks because I'm most interested in his story. Be frank, like, I want to know what the hell is going on with him. And maybe I'm missing nope, a side quest over here. That, that could be the problem. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I did love um, the character. Yuffie had a whole side quest that I did was very fun. Uh, and Ooh. then there was a another side quest in that side quest that I did. That was cool, too. But mm-hmm. I think that I, I guess that's all I, I really want to say. I can't wait to beat the game because I. I think I know the ending because I think I've been spoiled, yeah. but. If that's the ending, like. What do I do for the rest of the game? I don't, do you know the ending? I'm, obviously, I'm not going to say I, it. I'm just curious if you know what it is. I don't, but maybe that's why. Okay. Uh, that's why the new version kind of goes in some different ways, I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> what I've heard is that obviously with the remake, if anyone's played it or even heard about it, it's not going to follow the events of the game. Mm. So maybe 
this is to change that ending or something i don't know yeah. but again I, I think again i I think i know the ending but maybe i don't i don't know <laughs> uh aside from that yeah there, i don't think there's any other plans because i don't think i'll be able to get to originally the plan was maybe trying out hell divers but i just don't think i'll have time so i'll probably yeah. just be focusing on this i did finish suicide squad i've been playing i will play a little bit about that um i forgot to mention what i've been playing but uh uh yeah yeah yes it's that bad like if you're li- wondering oh. if, if 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 at home like oh is it really that bad yeah it's 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 that bad is it the worst thing ever no i honestly would argue it's probably the metacritic i think was like 60 something mm-hmm. that's pretty close probably what i would say is probably what it's worth wow. uh 68 or something is probably maybe a high 60 low 70 area it's a shame. Um, I almost I, I think about just doing a video about me just bitching about not even the thing people are bitching about because the story itself is pretty horrible, like in terms of what you could do. I mean, it's bad. It, it's pretty bad. <laughs> the dialogue between the Suicide Squad is actually, I would say, very good. It feels like there is a very good writer and they hired him to write the dialogue and then they and then they just shat out a right a, a written story to try and justify what's going on and it's ah. bad it really it's <laughs> it's probably the worst aspect of the game versus like weird shit where wh- why do i have a gun as harley quinn like it, it's there's so many things that at the base level of the game at the very introduction in pre-pro meetings they fucked it up because they were like let's make it a looter shooter I don't know why they thought that would be a good idea, but they did. Mm-hmm. They should have just made it a la Avengers, a la Marvel Ultimate Alliance esque type of get like upgrading, getting accessories or something. But they fucked it up entirely when they tried to like make guns feel good and the whole mix mission structure is. I mean, it's what happens when you get people who don't know what they're doing and making this game. They don't. They don't. Well, they weren't a fucking mo- online studio. They made single player games. They made three great ones with literally no multiplayer at all. And then they tried to and then they made them do this, which I don't know who made them. Maybe it was high rock steady execs. Maybe it was someone at um, WB saying you're making an online service game. We don't give a shit what it is, but you're making it. Do you whoever did it? They fucked it up bad because they don't know what they were doing. They actually have a lot of good shit in this game. There's a there's a core that's good. There's something in the game that's good. But it's 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 cracked and all fucked up and like it's 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 shocking, frankly, that they spent almost ten years on this game. Like, what were you doing? No offense, I'm not trying to be a dickhole to Rocksteady. I love them, but really though, what were you doing in ten years? This hell no, no you weren't. Do you think it was proposed because they had heard maybe of Gotham Knights and saw the direction it was going and thought they had to make kind of a similar thing? I I think it's just greed. I think what many studios tried to do, they saw Fortnite, they saw Apex, they saw Destiny. They're like, why aren't we trying to get piece of the pie and not understanding, not understanding that that's not how these games work. You can't have, you can't live in a world where there's twenty great live service games, because mm-hmm. there's not enough of us. There's not enough yeah. gamers to play twenty of them. There can only be three to five apex Fortnite, destiny which destiny is completely floundering <laughs> uh, so like that might not be a thing in two to three years who knows and then you yeah. know you have your like random side ones where not many people play but enough to to make the game live and then not even encroaching on mmo lifestyle games where people are like playing that and nothing else like there's just not enough gamers to make any of this make sense and people try and fail we have anthem we have this we have so many well how many ubisoft fucking games that they try and throw them at the wall see what works gotham knights i would argue is not even like this it's not really a game service it was kind of like it seems like it was trying to be that midway through development and probably threw it all out the window when they noticed it wouldn't work because when you play Gotham Knights, it's more of a self-contained game that you can kind of try and replay a little bit. But there's nothing like reoccurring, really. There's not like shit you buy and stuff like that. So, I mean, there is. But like, it de- it definitely seems like that was half-hearted. And they tried with this one. It just didn't work. Wild. 
that's really unfortunate. It, it is it's funny. Like right when you first started talking, I was thinking, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And you no. were like, it is. And then you know, it is exactly as bad. as. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it is. And it sucks. <laughs> and I'm a hardcore DC guy. Hardcore. I read a mm-hmm. shit ton. I know the lores. I know a little bit about everything. And what they do in this game to try and justify stuff, it just makes no sense. There's weird little things that happen. There's so much cooler things you could have done, but they Ooh. they pivot last second. I don't know. They 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 fucked it up. They clearly don't know what they didn't know what to do, which is obvious. Why why would they? Why would Bioware know how to make a game as a service? They've never done one before. Why would Rocksteady? Because they've never done one before. <laughs> of course, it's going to be bad. So. We all hoped, but it's a, it it does have a basis, and I wouldn't be shocked if in five years, not five years, sorry, if in a year, there's a good game. But that's yeah. the best we can probably hope for is a good game. I, right now, I'd say it's like, it's okay. Only play it if you're a diehard fan and play like, I don't know, plays like Harley Quinn and King Shark because they're fun. Cap Boomerang's pretty fun too. Deadshot was kind of boring because uh, his jetpack is so bad in terms of everyone who knew the guy who could fly was the worst traversal option fucking who knew (laughs) um would you say though not because you were like played if you're a diehard fan but not a diehard fan of the arkhamverse right oh no No, oh that's the worst (laughs) offense this game ever has so i'm not gonna spoil the game again although it's called suicide squad kill the justice league i feel like you could figure out some key details but i won't spoil it anyways why make it in the art? It clear clearly was a cash grab to make this in the Arkham first because the justification that it's in the Arkham first is equated in one sentence. One sentence at the beginning of the game. I'm not shitting anyone out there. There is one sentence that justifies this being an Arkham first game. It doesn't make any sense. It, do, it just, they just say it and they, I, I'm supposed to eat it up like, a, <laughs> like a good consumer and not question anything. It doesn't, it doesn't, and then they don't even follow the rules that were set in the Arkhamverse. Characters oh. that have died just come back. So what's the fucking <laughs> point? What is the point? It, it, they should have just made this an Elseworld thing, which it technically is if you go by like DC rules. Like, bull fuck. It. You think I'm going to think about this game when I ever think about the Arkham games? No, I'm not. It's not going to happen. So it, it, no. this game might as well not even exist narratively in that universe. And again, they don't even use the lore that makes sense in the game. Like there is no lore. Like for instance, Deadshot was shown in Arkham city. Mm. Deadshot. in this one is a, is a, is a black man completely different. So boom, mm. it's already is a re- reason for not to be said in there. Uh, there's a character that's dead uh, th- that dies in Arkham Knight. That is just reintroduced in this game. So why then? Why didn't you just re? Why didn't you just base it off something else then, or not base it on anything? Like they, they, there's no reason to use the Arkhamverse other than to say in your marketing it's based on the Arkhamverse game. That's literally the only reason. Doesn't make any other sense otherwise. They don't follow any of the rules. They pretend like there's relationships that that exist that don't. They pretend like Harley yeah. Quinn and Poison Ivy have a thing. They barely interacted in in the Arkhamverse games. Yeah, they, what the fuck yeah. is the point of of? They're just making shit up. <laughs> so it it doesn't it. I don't know. It well, it makes me upset when I think about it because again, Rocksteady they were thought of as top dogs, top five, like near Tam. You can make a argument that they were one of the best. With how well they did the Batman Arkham games, their design, the way they would flex their game design, the way they flexed the combat free flow system, which was very, very good. Not really redone well, in my opinion, than anyone else. And they just fuck it up. <laughs> they fucked it up. They made him do this game and or they did it themselves. I mean, we'll never know who chose to do this, but they fucked up. Awful. Thank you for giving me like 30 minutes to just bitch about that game. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear all the uh, all the perspectives on it because I feel like just outright being like, oh, it's it's garbage. I mean, that never helps with anything. Yeah. yeah. So I want and I will say it is not garbage. (laughs) I will say it is not. It's not like how does this exist terms of bad? It isn't. Mm -hmm. And whoever says that play more bad games. There's (laughs) bad. I've played shit bad games. This is. This is a bad game from Rocksteady. This is a horrible game from Rocksteady from that perspective. But it's a fine, it's a fine game. 
Like it's fine. Six out of ten is okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say spend thirty bucks on it. It'll be half off in a month and a half. I'm sure they probably. Although this does not, this is not indicative of their past games because Gotham Knights didn't review well either. But that sold fucking great. So, mm-hmm. but unlike that, it doesn't seem like Suicide Squad selling as well necessarily. We'll have to see in the MPD charts when the month ends. But the concurrence on Steam are really low. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's doing well in consoles. The only way we can tell is how it's ranked, which yeah. who knows how the fuck that's calculated. <laughs> so we'll have to see how well it sells, but it doesn't seem like it's doing great. And fucking a Rocksteady might be up for layoffs. Maybe who knows? Uh, that would make me sad as shit. They were chilling for 10 years. I thought they were cooking something fucking. I thought they were about to be like <laughs> lay their dick on the table. Like, here we are. We're Rocksteady. We've been making this for 10 years. And they just blundered it out it, it, it was funny is it looks great too like the visuals the mm-hmm. metropolis looks great the character models are honestly some of the best i've seen period mm-hmm. like the way they can they react facially reminds me of um injustice 2 that was a, a common compliment of that uh like they clearly spent time in certain aspects of the game but they they didn't know how to make the game yeah. They know how to make it fun. The UI's track. I mean, everyone saw the UI. It's fucking some of the worst I've ever seen in a video game. <laughs> it's like shocking how bad it is. That's awful. That's a true shame. Great. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for joining me this week. This was an intriguing <laughs> look at one you. This is our first time interacting. We we did not even interact yeah. in conversation or anything. So, uh, thank you. That was great. I enjoyed my time uh, with you. I hope you did as well. Again, thank you for your time uh, uh, donating two hours of your time. Uh, this went a, yeah. a little longer than I thought. That's good. That means good conversation was had. Uh, first off, where can we find you? Of course, they always know the description below is where we can find you uh, for links and these things, but let us know in the video as yeah. well. Um, so I'm on Twitter primarily or X or whatever. <laughs> um, uh, I'm at great low seven, 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 it's G R A Y T L O. And then three sevens. Um, and then I write and produce content for VGU.TV. We are at VGU underscore TV on Twitter, but yeah, we got a YouTube. We have our podcast feed. I, um, I, our game of the year stuff is going to be coming out finally. And we have, um, I run a podcast called Indie Book Club and we do like a replay of, or, or first time play through of indie games. And then we talk about them over time. And, um, so that'll be starting up again soon. We're going to be playing Oxen Free, which is like one oh. of my favorite games. The first one, and assumably. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. We're doing the first one to then do the second, cause that'll be my right. first time playing the second. Um, but yeah, yeah, VGU TV is is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so check out VGU. They're regularly shown off. Of course, Emmett's a frequent, so they'll know where to mm-hmm. go. Uh, and of course, in the descriptions, if you'd like a direct access, I'll put your handle in below as well. Yeah. Um, aside from that, thank you all for joining me. Until next time, go Chief.